Hey guys, Zogi Sanjay and welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I have the season two dev stream that we just watched now today from Diablo 4 for you guys. I've noted down everything while I was watching it and let me tell you guys, it is a lot of good changes. I'm not saying jump the bus and come back to Diablo right away, but if you have still been playing Diablo in the downtime recently, you will definitely be loving this stuff. And if you did leave because you were bored of Diablo 4, I mean, there was not much to do getting to 100 just took forever there's something in here for everybody i'm sure that you'll find something along all of these updates coming that you will like so definitely give it a look watch through the video i'll also have the link to the blog in the video as well so you can go check that out they, they like put everything in much higher detail over there and then next week we will also be getting another dev stream going through all the other changes like class changes and they're adding a bunch of new uniques as well also coming in season two and there's just a lot of stuff in here to cover they are fixing mounts a little bit. They're giving us some new endgame bosses to do. There is doing, there's a couple of new enemies really. I mean, it's just really reskinned old enemies that are like vampiric based and everything. But let's just get into it without further ado as there's a lot of stuff in the background. I myself have four pages of notes that I'm going to be covering. Or is it three pages? Something like that. Let's hop into it. Season two, season of the blood. Biggest update since launch. Link to the official blog is right there. I'll have this link down in the description as well. So you can just go and check out my Google Doc if you want. And then I'll have the blog listed as well. That is this over here. And it's pretty much listing everything in much larger detail. As well as all the powers as well. But I think I'm going to make a separate video going over all these powers. It's just too much to cover all in one video. So back to my notes. New vamp powers. We know that. Blood Harvest always active somewhere kind of like Helltide. So this is the new like activity thing that's going to be popping up in the season. Pretty much like a Helltide but a little bit different as we'll get into it further down. Five new bosses at World Tier 3. They start at World Tier 3 and 4 as well. I think there's two of them start in World Tier 3. So you can see there what levels 1 to 50. This is kind of like the progression they have in mind. And then 50 to 70 we're getting Echo of Arshan will be returning with this new guy over here. Grigoire the Saint dude. And then the way that you can actually get into these bosses is by, you see if you follow the arrows, you'll get items and materials from doing whispers. They'll actually give you keys and stuff or materials to like craft a key or whatever to actually go ahead and then do him. As well with the Helltide giving you materials to then go ahead and do this guy. And then the same thing down once we get to 71 to 100, you'll need materials from Echo of Ashan and from that new boss to then actually get to Duriel which is the new uber boss he is a little bit easier than Echo of Lilith I have said as she is like the pinnacle and or be all boss so she is still the hardest boss out of these according to them and then over there as well from nightmare dungeons in tier 4 we can get materials to craft the key to get the beast in the ice and then world bosses and legion events we can go ahead and verse Lord Zer. there will be a story related boss fight like similar to like Varshan in the current season 1 in season two as he's like the season two boss pretty much in everything there so that is what that's going to look like five bosses extreme rare uniques from bosses uber uniques they will be adding ubers and i mean uniques to all the bosses so each of these bosses will have a loot table which i'll probably announce next week or if not leave it us leave it up to us to all find and then note for you guys in the future and then as well with um Duriel actually giving the chance at uber uniques packs needed to fuel skills can be added to gear better than malignant hearts already so that's they're talking about stuff you need things to like unlock these powers to actually get the vampire powers to work in your gear but that like i said that is another video on another time was going over the notes enemies just look like reskin current enemies that's what i seen in the dev stream they will be blood seekers which are like the lieutenants they are player classes that have turned to the dark side well to become vampires fully so these will blood seeker guys will actually have a high chance to drop potent blood which you then use to upgrade and unlock new powers i'm guessing new blood and that kind of stuff and these will just be player class type enemies so obviously you'll have your barbarians necromancers rogues sorks and druids that have all become these blood seekers which are just probably much just like elite enemies that we need to go ahead and face kind of like the malignant guys i guess but hopefully don't have to click nothing and wait three seconds for them to spawn so we'll see how that goes blood harvest starts at level one so right away as soon as you start the season up if you skip the campaign the blood harvested areas will be starting right away blood harvest is like we said the new outside thing which is going to take over a zone there's always an active zone somewhere materials from there are specific to there and they also won't disappear once they leave there so it's not like the outside cinders where you collect stuff from open chests there is specific materials that you can farm in there and then they'll 
persist after you finish it as well or once it moves on to the new area they don't have to worry about that and then i heard him say something about bloodlers or bloodler i can't i can't remember some kind of a way for you to be able to summon blood seekers to you and as we said their blood seekers are the lieutenants and then they can obviously drop these better things so you want to kind of summon them and then kill them to farm the materials and stuff you need there when you collect them they stay with you even after blood harvest hunter a claim board seems like a bounty board with activities to do or maybe a reputation system i believe they go further into detail over that in this over here somewhere i read down the bottom somewhere around yeah you can actually read with the reputation also while we're there those are some of the new bosses being added that's the same guy that's the frozen guy and then that's durial so definitely go read the blog there for some more content over there end game boss system adding this to both realms to full game not just season two so the five extra bosses that will be added will be added in the eternal realm as well as the seasonal realm one season two does kick off so you can go and play that straight away if you don't feel like playing in the season there is some content for non-season players Varshan starts at war tier three whispers give you pieces needed to summon him like i showed you guys in this picture of yes we won't go over to that too much and then the same guy war tier three how gives you his keys bosses are very elementally themed so i believe the saint guy he was like electric themed or whatever and then obviously the frozen dude will be frozen themed or like frost themed or ice themed or whatever so you will need to build resistances towards them we'll have to see how that all goes as i will be explaining that next week in the update then as we see they will talk about all unique changes at the october 10 dev stream resistances as well as damage bucket changes will all be spoken about in that dev stream and then uh, what else we got beast in the ice what they're for durial king of maggots a uh, higher chance at uber uniques lord zir world boss legion key events each boss has specific uniques in their loot pools we'll go over that once we know more about it bosses are a permanent addition so these will be staying with the game all the way through the coming seasons and the eternal realm and then they'll probably be adding more bosses on to that eventually new quality of life updates there's quite a bit of here scroll of escape will be consumed if a player dc's in hardcore even if you dc yourself like if you pur purposely dc i believe they said something like that they'd rather just have it still be a thing instead of you know not working properly and trying to figure out how it all works and then incense give you xp boost and persist after death that's what we now it's nice as the incense thing is a group buff so if you're all near each other you can chuck on the incense and you'll all get a increased xp in the group experience changes are multiplicative in the world tier bonuses so that is really nice there i wrote their stronghold baby because i think stronghold leveling is going to be much faster than two once you can actually get into world tier 4 if you can beat your capstone dungeon really early and get into world tier 4 because the strongholds always scale to two levels above your character but then you'll keep the stronghold xp bonus so it should be a really good way to level in the season but as well further on we'll see whispers are actually getting a massive update as well so doing whisper leveling could be another way to go as well and then it says you have time to get to level 100 i missed that they will be 40 percent faster it better be these are my little notes as you can see and we got 10 waypoints being unlocked automatically two in each zone before i think it was like one in each of the major cities but now we're getting 10 waypoints unlocked early on so you don't have to go and discover all the waypoints and they said these will be like strategically placed around the world map going to stuff where you need to obviously go and do activities so like near the whisper tree and near some other towns and stuff like that renown rewards persist through seasons and new characters no more re-renown that for me is one of the best changes because i do not like doing renown again i've already done it twice now obviously done it when the before the season started and then obviously in season one you have to go ahead and do it as well so you'll keep all the rewards you can still obviously go and do the renown if you want to but the rewards are like the paragon points and the increased oval shards and all that kind of stuff and the skill points as well will be there right from the get-go so you can start a level one character as the season starts and i believe you start with like five or six extra skill points so you can like have some sort of a build going like as soon as you level one you can get your first spender and you can level up your basic skill as well two additional character slots will be added no more bank space question mark i know no more level scaling in open worlds war tier three and four this was a massive one for me so the mobs will be at your level or possibly higher but no more level scaling so that where they like trailed behind you with five levels and that is not going to be the thing obviously i think i i misworded this but probably the level scaling yes because they'll scale to your level but no more of the five levels behind you and then going to like a maximum so you won't feel underpowered or overpowered in these places 
there'll be like a point to actually go out into the world and do stuff as you can be focusing a lot more on world activities in the season there's a lot more open world stuff coming further down and uh, towns and vendors this has to have a space there we go occultus is now at the tree of whispers so it's gonna be good as the tree of whispers has received a number of updates we'll see down here where it's going to be a lot better to actually go and do them stashes have been added to all small towns kw because they just added the box they didn't actually add stash spaces but it is what it is we'll see what happens there extra stashes near important vendors in big cities people smile you know smile away boys no more stash spaces but they're giving us our small little stashes all over the place so we can access it and fill it up that much faster we'll just have to see how that all works out Oval vendors are in better places, nearer to everything else. So they're more central, they're not so hidden away anymore, which is really good. Mounts are less likely to get stuck and slowed down by objects and all that stuff. Increase their base movement speed by 14%. It would be nicer to use them in cities. It's just going to increase their base movement speed so they'll be moving without hitting the spur thingy. And then the spur speed duration was increased by 50%, so it will last 50% longer. Also now using spur breaks through barricades. I know a lot of people actually like this change. I basically never use a mount because I always play a druid and I end up playing a werewolf druid which runs faster than the mount anyway. So I barely ever use a mount but now I might actually start using a mount and I'll probably be playing a rogue this season. But they apparently also move really fast. So we'll have to see if I actually do end up using the mount. But for all you mount lovers out there, there is some changes to them. And then there has been cooldown changes to the mount dismounts. They had the specific times and everything, but I didn't think it was important to list it. So we're just going to put it there over there for you guys to see. Nightmare dungeon changes. Teleporting to a nightmare dungeon now takes you inside the dungeon. That is massive as I am a massive nightmare dungeon enjoyer. I just spam them back to back while I'm watching something on my other screen or just, you know, zoning out. That's great for me. So you don't have to teleport anymore. And then walk through the dungeon so you get two loading screens before you can actually just get into the dungeon. Now you just click the nightmare sigil, teleports you straight into the dungeon and you start killing everything in your path and getting your loot. Dungeon events density increased, NPCs no longer get one shot. I don't really care about NPCs but the density being increased is nice as it will make them worth better, more worthwhile doing the events in dungeons. I usually always skip them unless they're like the good events, I believe it's like the first uh the well thingy and then also the what's it the last survivor guy is like the only ones that i ever do everything else i pretty much skip so now i'll actually have to go ahead and do some events that's good because i don't want to skip them so to say it's just like there was no real point in doing them i'd rather finish the dungeon faster with more density and better rewards traps are easy to see and reduce cc overall they did want to express this that CC overall has been decreased across the board. So not just from the traps in dungeons. They made the traps easier to see. So they show like marks on the ground and things where the traps are. But the overall CC in the whole game has been reduced from all the mobs and everything they can do to CC you. Paragon glyph experience has been increased. So you can faster level up your glyphs and get some more power straight away. The backstabbing ethics has been changed. Now close monsters attack from behind make you vulnerable. And then they had some other stuff with it. But that was like the biggest thing is it has to be a monster close to you. And they also need to attack you from behind. And then they put the vulnerable on you. And then monster crit resist as well as change. Monster attacks reduce your crit strike for three seconds. Stacking I think it was up to like three or four times or something like that. But they just change how it works. Death pulse as well prevented on monsters with this explosions already so any monsters that have their own explosions uh like the fiery dudes when they explode they do the fire explosion they can't get death pulse on top of that so it's just their explosion and also prevents death pulse from spawning or overlapping so no more chain explosions where the whole place will just be death pulse all over the place the lightning storm was changed this is like the only effects i ever avoided because i just hate playing with this that is i mean it's still pretty bad but it's better Increase the speed by 35% when you're stuck in the bubble. So when you stand in the bubble, you'll get increased 35%. I believe it was for 5 second movement speed. So you get increased movement speed once you actually stand in the bubble, which is good. So then you just run out the bubble faster and make up for the time you spent standing in the bubble. And only spawns in combat. So if you're not in combat, the bubble won't spawn. This is a really nice change. Because walking from objective to objective in the dungeon, sometimes you'll like not be in combat. But then the stupid bubble spawns like ages behind you and you get killed because you need to run back and get to the bubble. Another thing there is we'll only spawn as well when the player has a path to reach it. So no more random one shots when you're going down ladders and stuff like that. 
So only if you can actually reach the bubble will it then spawn. Drifting shade as well has been decreased from 5 to 3 seconds. I believe that's like the thing it leaves on the ground when it hits you. And its respawn timer has been increased by 2 seconds. They've also removed the objectives of some dungeons to just find the boss. So basically, I forgot a comma there. They've removed the objectives from some dungeons and they've changed them to just find the boss. Find the boss, get everything in your path and that's it. Quick and easy. Place objectives on a critical path, so trying to reduce backtracking. And then many layouts have been redesigned as well, trying to limit backtracking overall. Then we have a lot of world event changes. Time reduced between Legion events from 30 to 25 minutes. So there'll be a Legion event every 25 minutes. And the warning timer has increased from 5 to 10 minutes of when it's going to start. The world boss spawn has been reduced from 6 hours to 3 and a half hours. And the warning timer has been increased from 30 minutes to 1 hour. As well as a message broadcast to everyone 15 minutes before the world boss spawns. And I hope this will be in Nightmare Dungeons. I didn't mention anything about that, but I really hope that does happen. Because most of the time when I'm on Diablo, I'm spamming Nightmare Dungeons. And if there's nothing popping up in the middle of my screen, like a hell tide or nothing, I just keep spamming my Nightmare Dungeons. And then we got some changes to end game activities. Nightmare sigils will drop from Whisper Caches within five levels of your highest Nightmare Dungeon clear. So the sigils will no longer just be like the lowest tier of sigils. If you've cleared a 90, then it's always going to drop within five levels of that. So between 85 and 90 is the sigils you'll be getting from that one over there. Gold rewards from Whispers have been greatly increased. Whisper new leveling strat. We'll have to see and taste that once the season starts. But I believe doing Whispers would be a really good way to start out now in the early levels. Experience from Whisper Helltide has been increased substantially. And they put that word there in specific substantially. So that's we know it's a massive increase. That's why I put over there on my little comment confirmed. As I believe Whispers is going to be really good now. Whisper caches will always give items according to the cache you choose. So if you choose Helms, you'll only get Helms. No more like getting a few of that item and then some of the other items. You'll only get what is listed in the cache. And then Helltide chests have specific icons on the maps. Heck yeah. So when you see a, when you open up your map in Helltide, it's going to have like a little weapon icon. It's going to have like boots icon, armor, armor, whatever like that. That's going to be really good as I hated just finding, having to like open my map most of the time to look where I want to go instead of just, you know, quickly glancing at my map and saying, okay, there's a weapon there, there's jewelry there, run in that direction, stuff like that. That's really nice. I like that. So I'll actually start doing how diets more often now. Then we have some UI changes as well. Items can be marked as favorite or junk. Really nice over there. Favorite items cannot be sold or salvaged. That is really good if you are someone that likes to sort through your bag. I myself have just gotten used to how it is now, but that is really good. Extracted aspects with the same power will be grouped together. So when you sort items in your bank, the same aspects will be grouped together. The same power, so like the same aspect. Sorting has been improved for normal affixes to be more consistent. Whisper dungeons will show what aspect the dungeon gives as well. So if there is a dungeon with a whisper that you know how some dungeons become tree of whisper dungeons where you do them and you get your five tree of whisper thingies then but if you haven't done them before they won't show you which uh, legendary power you can actually get from that dungeon now they'll actually show you as well so if you haven't done that dungeon yet they'll show you what aspect this gives and the stash can now be searched and filtered this one is like one of the massive changes for me so let's go ahead and mark that up like that this is massive, really, really good as most of my time is spent stash managing once I'm actually back in town, looking through things and changing our builds, making build videos for you guys. I've got to like sort out my stash so good and go through it so like, opt like I don't know, it's, it's weird, but I love that change. It's going to be massive as well as some other stuff coming as well, but filtering the stash is just amazing. Stream remote implemented for you guys that want to highlight your battle tags or whatever if you are streaming, but that has been added. Combat tags can be hidden. Vulnerable dodge, fortified EDC, so now you can, hide, you can hide the combat damage as well as the text and everything so you don't have to look at any numbers while you are fighting. Auto run has been added. Minimap has been zoomed out further so you can see a wider area and like see stuff on your minimap better. Now let's go over the item changes. Gems no longer drop as items. Fragments to be crafted at jewelers. Good change. So that's going to free up a lot of storage space as well. You can dismantle those gems if you're like leveling up and you've got some lower level gems. You can dismantle them and then they'll go back into the materials that you can then use to craft gems. Obviously, once you craft a gem, it will be an item that you have to socket and will be an item in your bag. But you'd have to craft it so you obviously you want it if you craft it. And then the enchantment cost has been updated. So pretty much reduced it overall. 
but the first initial reroll on an item has been increased but all the rerolls after that have been greatly decreased as well as the the like the scale at how it ramps up has also been reduced so it's gonna be a lot cheaper to actually reroll items i can't wait to see this as again making a lot of different builds on different characters for you guys does become really costly so that is why i haven't really done so many lately is i just have to play so much then try and find the items and then actually re-rolling and just costs all my gold and two days of farming gives me like one item for a video obviously i need a bunch of items you guys can see where i'm going with this that's massively good change for me and any content creator in that regard crafting materials will replace low item power normal magic and rare stuff in world tier 3 and 4 and then i kind of went further on this basically once you're in world tier 3 or well, let's make it easier to understand once you're in world tier 4 you get ancestral items right but before you would have the chance at ancestral normal and sacred so it's a lot more diluted the loot that you'll be getting obviously you're only really caring about ancestral loot once you're in world tier 4 so now once you're in world tier 4 the sacred items will become material drops so if an item drops and it would have been a sacred item now it's going to be material instead a crafting material and if it would have dropped as a normal item it would be a crafting material instead so you'll be only seeing crafting materials alongside ancestral items ancestral items are the only items you'll be seeing that drop and then obviously they did say over there legendary items will still drop regardless of your tiers so if you're in world tier 4 you can still see normal legendary items drop it's not like they're going to dismantle the normal normal legendary items and then give you the materials it will obviously drop as that legendary because you can still take that aspect out and then put it on an ancestral piece making it an ancestral aspect so to say but that is a really good change obviously that's going to um lower the need of like sorting through loot as well as also stash base indirectly so a really good change over there item change will help with inventory a lot as i just said greater item power potential on higher level monsters we'll see how this scales so like i said they went over this a little bit but it's a little bit confusing right now until we can get a better understanding for it but they're going to give you higher level enemies pretty much are going to have a higher pool of like an item power that they can pull for i think it was like they said there was a range that like 75 was the range so say now you kill a level 55 enemy the range level of the item that can drop obviously 55 so it would be sacred so it's at like 600 so like 600 to 675 is the item level you could get off of a 55 monster and then you kill a 56 monster and now the range has gone up by two so it will be 602 up to 677 or something like that and that's kind of like how it's going to work is they're just going to increase it so have have like a reason to actually kill high level monsters and then obviously straight away i thought to myself well then the best thing then would to be what like to gear up would be to do a nightmare dungeon level 100 as then that will give you the highest range of potential item level you can get is to do nightmare dungeon 100 because the enemies in there are level 154 or something like that you farm up a full set of those item level powers and then you go ahead and fight your uber bosses once you have your full gear set at like the max item power you can get as well as some change over there normal whisper caches will now provide 10 plus item power so this scales with your level i believe so we'll see what exactly the ranges are on that but at least you'll be getting stuff at a good item power for where you're at and then the legendary caches so, so the yeah the legendary ones from the whispers will be at a plus 20 item power Helltide caches now provide plus 20 item power obviously up to a cap so it's not like you can I think at level 100 there'll be that cap of like what the range is so we definitely have to work that all out but it's definitely more incentive to go ahead and farm stuff at a higher level because before you get to level 100 you, you know farm up some min maxing gear and then try and kill Lilith and that's that's that end of the story but now you can actually really min max each piece by getting them with the high item power stuff you could get before you just really look for the best stats you can get the item power was i mean obviously you wanted a higher item power but you couldn't get it. it wasn't the end of the story so now you can definitely go ahead and get the perfect stats as well as high item power really good over there and then we got 920 uber uniques item powers from durial so the range is much smaller than 75 but 920 is the highest i believe they said as well as uber unique drops at a max affix and level so i'm not sure if they meant that uber uniques from durial will always drop at 920 but something that was hinted that 920 is the highest item power that you can receive maybe they meant to say 820 but i think they said 920 so we'll see how that all goes with them smoldering ashes level tiers will be lowered and auto unlocked so before you get the smoldering uh, ashes much later in the level 
in the the season pass thingy and then obviously those you can use to get the xp boost which was buffed in previous patches and it'll be much later like after level 60 level 70 is when you can really start getting all the xp stuff and by that time you don't really care anymore so that is good that they are lowering it as well as auto unlocking it because you could go through a bunch of tiers in your what do you call it the thingy and then you forget to unlock them earlier tiers you actually gotta go back into your power pass or battle pass whatever it is and then look back at them to actually unlock them so that auto unlocking really nice feature like that three new season blessings will be added to the ashes i mean right now we have the malignant stuff so it's pretty much just going to replace those malignant stuff with the vampire stuff you like you've got higher chance at getting malignant items from malignant dungeons and whatever like that they're probably just going to replace those blessings with stuff themed to season two we've got the new town portal skins that is available in the free track as well so we can get some new portal skins for our town portals d4 is coming to steam in season two cool over there we've got the questions and answers let me just pump this up there so it makes it a nice little equal amount so d4 is coming to steam in season two you will have to repurchase it if you want it on steam but there is that option for all you steam enjoyers out there Question and answers, big plans for optimization in the future and in-game content. We all know that. Maybe a Paragon reset button coming. This one is massive for me. They all said like wink wink. We'll like talk about it later. So I assume they're going to put it in the October 10th stream with a Paragon reset button. That'll be really nice. As I have said multiple times, making builds for you guys is, you know, time consuming, gold consuming. And just having that little quality of life, it will save me like 10 minutes of just going through my Paragon board and unselecting everything be really nice to have that added 12 uniques coming in season two and their theme was like plus minus six uniques per season but they wanted to increase that as they're showing with obviously the 12 uniques coming in season two then we'll see in season three how that all goes the duo boss fight is not as hard as lilith overall looking into crafting specific nightmare sigils these are all questions and these are the answers well i just listed the answers really as you can see what the question is about Want to improve the Codex of Power in the future. Season 3 will be leaderboards. Well, they'll be adding leaderboards in Season 3. And then someone asked about loot filters. And they are looking into loot filters, but nothing on it yet. As that is like a new thing to them. As there wasn't really much loot filtering in D3. I'm, maybe D2, I've never really played it. But uh, yeah, they're looking into loot filters as they know it is something requested by all of us. So that is it. A lot to go through. I'll have this up in the description. You can go ahead and check it out as well as the blog. A lot of stuff on the blog to go ahead and read through all of that. I'll make another video covering all of that. And then on the 10th of October, we will have the other dev stream. Going over some more stuff. Expect stuff to come out when that goes live as well. So we'll be covering that all. I do plan to cover Diablo. I mean, I never left Diablo. Just like everybody else taking a break. Because once you get to level 100 in season 1... There wasn't really much to do so you go in there beat uber Lilith, and then just wait until the next season so this season looks really good to me there's a lot of good changes coming especially the stash stuff like the filter for me that was really good and then the nightmare changes teleporting there automatically massive change for me the mount change is nice to town vendors and then a lot of the item changes are really good as well as the whisper changes is one of my favorite things as I do enjoy doing whispers and being out in open world, there's just no reason to do them before. But now with all the changes, definitely going to see how whisper leveling is going to go in the new season. That's probably what I will be doing once the new season comes out, leveling up through whispers. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys will be playing season two and what you guys think of all these updates. Does it look good? What's your opinion? Chuck it down there. Love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you beautiful people in the next one. Foggy saying out. Run free and dive into the sky Hear the wind crying